In fact, Abi Lubaba, radiallahu anhu, Abi Lubaba, he made some mistakes with regards to the tribe of Bani Quraidah, which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ordered him. And subhanAllah, because of these mistakes that he did on purpose out of his fear, he was embargoed by the people of Medina. And the people refused to speak to him, even his wife, even his daughter, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that he forgave him. When these verses were sent, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in the home of Um Salama radiallahu anha. And Um Salama radiallahu anha, she said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after she saw him smiling, she said, what is it that makes you smile, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Tib ala Abi Lubaba, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven and accepted the repentance of Abi Lubaba radiallahu anhu. Then subhanallah, Um Salama, she said, Afala ubashiruhu ya Rasulullah? Shall I not go give him this good news? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, In shit, if you want, if you like, you may do so. And this was before the time that the hijab had been legislated. Thus Um Salama radiallahu anha, she said from her door to the people that Abi Lubaba has been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abi Lubaba, he heard this and he said, I will not believe it until I hear it from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. And until he heard it from the Prophet, which of course the Prophet readily gave him these wonderful tidings, he was not able to rest in his heart. The second was after the Ghazwa of the Battle of Tabuk. When we know the three companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who stayed behind for legitimate reasons, were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there was an embargo put on them as well. And one of those companions was Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the home of Um Salama, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتْ وضاقت عليهم أنفسهم وظنوا أن لا ملجأ من الله إلا إليه ثم تاب عليهم ليتوبوا إن الله هو the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in the home of Um Salama radiallahu anha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in the ninth chapter of the Quran, the 118th verse, the verse which expounds the forgiveness of these three companions. And subhanAllah, at the end of the verse, we find a very beautiful statement of Allah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was in, subhanAllah, the house of Um Salama, when these three verses were sent, forgiving these three companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Um Salama, radiallahu anha, when she was told of this by the Prophet Muhammad, again she said, shall I not go give them the good news? Should I not give them the good news? of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um Salama radiallahu anha, she participated in a number of battles of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some of which were the Ghazwa or the battle of Khaybar and also the victory at Mecca. She was very active there serving the soldiers and helping the wounded and the sick. Another important quality which our mother Um Salama possessed was her fasahatuha, was her ability to speak very, very beautifully. And actually, our mother, Um Salama, she wrote a lot of poems. And a lot of beautiful poems have been passed on to us, written by our mother, Um Salama, radiallahu anha. One of the beautiful statements of our mother, Um Salama, is the statement that she made at the time of the death of Aisha, bint Abi Bakr, radiallahu anha. When Um Salama said, Rahimakillah, wa ghafara lak. When she said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon you. 
Our mother, Um Salama, radiallahu anha, the ulama said that she narrated 387 ahadith on behalf of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa She was the second most prolific narrator after Aisha radiallahu anha. The ulama, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them, they said that our mother, Um Salama, she is from the second group of companions in the area of given fatwa. The second group. This means that Um Salama has been categorized with such people as Uthman bin Athan and Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhuma. She is the second most prolific narrator from the Ummahatul Mu'mineen in the areas of hadith, narrating 387 hadith on behalf of the Prophet sallallahu If you take the two texts of Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim, you find that they agreed on 13 hadith related by our mother Um Salama. Three of those hadith are found in Sahih al-Bukhari and ten of those hadith are found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. In the year 58 AH after the Hijra of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Um Salama became more and more important to the community of the Muslims. Because in that year, that is the year that our mother Aisha bint Abi Bakr passed away. And Um Salama, the ulama said she was the last Ummuhat to die. She was the last wife of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to die. Thus, after the death of our mother Aisha, Um Salama radiallahu anha became so important. And more and more people began to flock to her and seek knowledge from her. And if we look at her fatawa, we find that our mother Um Salama gave fatwa in the following areas. In the areas of salah. She discussed how the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to pray salah. In the area of zakah, she talked about giving zakah to the family members. In the area of janazah, in the area of fasting, the one who woke up and he was in sexual defilement. This was discussed by Um Salama radiallahu anha. I was reading subhanAllah one day a book of Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullah alayhi and I came across a fatwa about the hijab. And do you know, subhanAllah, who Ibn Taymiyyah, he quoted, he quoted our mother, Um Salama, radiallahu anha. She was such a great scholar that she had students from the companions, some of which were Aisha, bint Abi Bakr, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, her son Umar, and Anas bin Malik, as well as Abdullah bin Abbas, radiallahu anhuma. From the tabi'een, she taught such great personalities as Sa'id ibn Musayyib, rahimahullah, the Imam of the Tabi'een, Mujahid, and Nafi'. And Um Salama, she placed a lot of emphasis on the teaching of women. And we find that the greatest student from the women who were taught by Um Salama was who? Was her daughter. Her daughter was her greatest student. SubhanAllah, sisters, what are we teaching our daughters? Are we teaching our daughters to like Shah Rukh Khan? Are we teaching our daughters to like DMX? Are we teaching our daughters to like the Haram? Are we teaching our daughters not to pray Fajr? Are we teaching our daughters not to dress correctly? What was Um Salama radiallahu anha teaching her daughter? She was teaching her the noble statements of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Our mother Um Salama, she died 65 years after the migration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a short time after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein radiallahu anhu, under the Khilafah of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our mother Um Salama radiallahu anha. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us insha'Allah from those people who will follow her good example. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfiru wa astaghfiru. Astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim.